Everyone has a good idea of how light interacts with materials that you can see. For example, when you have a mirror, it reflects most of the light, and that's how you can see yourself. Did you ever wonder how small you can make a mirror? Could you ever make a mirror out of only a single atom? My name is Derek Chang, and I lead the Theoretical Quantum Nanophotonics Group at ICFO. My group studies how light and matter interact with each other at the level of their most basic particles, single photons and single atoms. At these very small scales, they're governed by the strange laws of quantum mechanics. One thing my group tries to do is figure out how we can use these laws to our advantage to build future technologies and also to create states of matter and light that have never been seen before. There are experiments around the world now that can study the interaction between single atoms and photons. For example, now we can take optical fibers so thin that you can't even see them and trap atoms nearby. One thing we're interested in is studying the interaction between light guided through these fibers and these atoms. Even though a single atom is very small, we found that it can act as a very good mirror. So a single atom, like this, can take a single photon coming in and reflect it into the opposite direction. But light also exerts forces. These forces are too small to notice in everyday life. So for example, when you look at yourself in the mirror, uh, your own reflection can't knock you over. But in the case that the mirror is made out of a single atom, that atom will actually go flying when that photon is reflected off. Now imagine that you have a lot of atoms near the fiber. The situation gets pretty complicated. You have lots of little mirrors like this and photons just bouncing around everywhere. But amazingly, we found there's a phenomenon called self-organization that can occur. Instead of bouncing around randomly forever, the atoms eventually settle into a neat row, all held together by light. This crystal of atoms held together by light is a pretty strange quantum material we're still trying to understand all of its properties now. For example, can you make it melt the same way that a crystal of ice turns into water? It's still er too early to know whether this strange material will be useful for future technologies, whether it's an optical computer or sensors or something else. But at the same time, you certainly can't use what you can't make or understand so I do feel that we're building up the right tools for the future. In research, you always come up against phenomena that are confusing and hard to understand. But the idea that there's a simple and beautiful concept behind it, and to try and go and find that concept, to me, that's the best part about doing science.